was scheduled to take place after the three tube train explosions. A white van from a demolition company called Kingstar is seen and photographed parked at the side of the bus immediately after the explosion and a mysterious witness Richard Jones gives an account of what he says happened to the bus on camera which is something that normally would not be allowed by the police unless it was part of a film training exercise. Then, after a spate of very contradictory TV and newspaper interviews within a very short space of time that makes sure everyone now believes the explosion was caused by a suicide bomber on the bus, Richard Jones disappears from view. However, and of particular interest, some newspapers, including the UK Sunday Mail on the 10th of July 2005, reported that Richard Jones served an apprenticeship at an explosives factory in Ayrshire. Richard Jones' statements about the suicide bomber are very suspicious for two reasons. First, because they are so inconsistent and contradictory that they are not believable. And second, because criminals usually accuse someone else to divert attention away from themselves. Is that what Richard Jones did? He says that he and 11 other people got off the bus just before it exploded. Were the 12 of them a team, with the other 11 there to cover up what Richard Jones was doing as he planted a bomb? Another strange statement he made to the Sun newspaper, reported in the 8th of July 2005 edition, is that he got off the bus because he had reached his destination. How could he possibly have reached his destination on a bus that had been diverted from its normal route unless he was part of the mock terrorism exercise team and got off the bus as planned in Tavistock Square after planting a bomb just before it was detonated. Does he work for Kingstar? Kingstar, whose white van was parked next to the bus, is a company that specializes in controlled demolitions, and Richard Jones said he served an apprenticeship at an explosives factory in Ayrshire. Was the Kingstar van there as part of Peter Power and his customers training mock terrorism drill? to supervise the mock explosion that became real? So, if Hasib Hussain was supposed to have been on that number 30 bus, registration LX03BUF, how would it be possible for him to get the exact bus that would get him to one of the four locations where the mock terrorist exercise would be taking place when that bus was diverted from its normal route to Tavistock Square, unless he had been recruited to play the part of a mock terrorist and told exactly which bus to get, where and at what time by the people who organised the mock terrorism exercise and who knew the bus would be diverted to Tavistock Square. The odds against that happening by coincidence are unbelievable, and thus it is not possible that it was a coincidence. Another unbelievable coincidence is that all of the CCTV cameras at all four of the blast sites were not working that day. The four CCTV cameras on the number 30 bus were just like the Israeli variant systems ones on the underground, not working, and there are no reliable witnesses who can place Hasib Hussain on the number 30 bus. Richard Jones is an unreliable witness whose physical descriptions of the man he says was the suicide bomber does not fit with Hasib Hussain's appearance or what he was wearing that day. So there is no proof that Hasib Hussain was either on that bus or blew it up. Even so, he has been tried and wrongfully found guilty of blowing up the number 30 bus by the government-organised and controlled media machine, 
without a shred of real evidence. They claim to have found Hasib Hussain's ID in Tavistock Square. However, they also claim that ID from another of the four, Muhammad Siddiqui Khan, was found in at least two, some reports say three, separate blast locations. He cannot possibly have been in two or all three locations at the same time, proving that these items were planted after the blasts. How could their IDs have survived suicide bomb blasts? Millions of people are aware of the magic fireproof Mohammed Atta passport that was planted at the World Trade Center on 9-11. In light of these incidents, if ID from Hasib Hussein was found at Tavistock Square, it does not necessarily mean that he was on the bus and not somewhere else. Or, if he was on the bus, that he blew the bus up. What has happened to the presumption of innocence and being considered innocent until proven guilty and convicted by a jury of your peers in court that has always been the mainstay of British justice? The most likely case is that the number 30 bus had been pre-rigged with explosives during its previous service when the CCTV cameras were disabled. The CCTV systems on stagecoach buses are normally either the Israeli company Verint systems RP12001 or Timespace X200. A witness, Richmal Marie Oates Whitehead, aged 35, who worked at the BMA in Tavistock Square and was hailed as a heroine for her actions during the London bombings, said she heard two explosions on the bus. The controlled media immediately went on the offensive and did a character assassination of the heroine because her testimony did not fit with the official story and she died unexpectedly shortly afterwards. However, other witnesses also reported a second explosion on the bus. Richmal's and other witnesses' testimonies would account for pre-planted explosives and a bomb being planted later on 7-7-2005. What we can be certain about, though, is that, either on the bus or elsewhere, Hasib Hussain, like the other three Muslim patsies, was murdered. <laughs>